Now, as we know, parts of the UK have been hit by water shortages and grass fires ahead of a Met Office Amber Alert for extreme heat coming into force on Thursday. A number of water suppliers have introduced hose pipe bans. Thames Water is the latest supplier to signal it may well bring one in in the coming weeks. Well, joining me now is Stuart Colville, Director of Policy for Water UK. Now, this represents water companies across the UK. You're, you're a body that, that's funded by all the, the water companies. Um, how do you think they are doing at the moment? Why is it that we are seeing some areas where there is obviously a problem with the heat, like Thames Water and like the South East? introducing host pipe bans, but we're not, for example, seeing it in other areas like Anglia, where they also have very dry conditions. Well, companies are introducing temporary use bans or host pipe bans where that becomes necessary, uh, and they take those decisions based on a number of indicators. Um, so, for example, levels of groundwater, river flow, uh, temperatures and so on. Uh, and it's clear that although the heat wave uh, and other weather conditions have been very extreme recently, the impacts have been felt differently in different parts of the country. Uh, and it's tended to be in the, in the south and centre of England where we've seen some of the impacts felt worse, particularly on things like rivers, some of which have broken records recently for their for their low flow and companies are doing a huge amount in response to that temporary use bans or hose pipe bans are just one of the ways that we are responding there are lots of other things as well we are changing the way that we abstract water choosing sources that are less under pressure moving it around our regions differently to help other users including agriculture which has been hard hit and we're also taking action to help the environment so for example we are sending pulses of cold water out of reservoirs to rehydrate and cool rivers where fish stocks have been under threat so there's an enormous amount going on but in in some, in some areas, uh, it has been necessary to introduce these additional restrictions to safeguard uh, water supplies and protect the environment. Is it a coincidence that, that those who are particularly bad at leaks are the ones that appear to be putting in the hose pipe bans? We know that Thames Water has had a significant problem over the years, hasn't it? Well, leakage overall has come down over a third since the 1990s. Uh, and in fact, off what the economic regulator for the water sector just last week, I think, put out um, confirmation that we've hit the lowest ever level of, re of, of leakage on record. We've never had still, still uh, not, so few still leaks. Still not hitting the England. targets that off what want, want the water companies to hit, though, are they? It's pushing for 16 per cent. And we saw some, like Northumbria Water, hitting 1 per cent. We, we are on track overall as a sector to achieve a 16% reduction in leakage between 2020 and 2025, which means that our international performance on leakage is actually very good if you compare us with um, comparison nations like Italy or, or indeed Ireland. All water companies reduced leaks last year, um, though you are right that although the majority hit their targets, some while reducing leaks didn't uh, meet their targets because those targets are really stretching. Mm. Should there be sanctions for water companies that don't meet these leakage targets? Yeah, so any company that doesn't meet its targets uh, is subject to some quite high financial penalties. Um, so there's a very strong incentive to, uh, to every company to, to achieve them, which is why we've seen the progress that we have, uh, as I say, lowest ever levels of leakage on record. But I think the important thing to remember is that leakage is not the only thing that's important here. We do also need new sources of supply, and we've brought forward 18 new major cross-country schemes, uh, which regulators are scrutinising now, new reservoirs, new connections, and that's going to be part Part of the uh, solution as well, as well as water efficiency, where actually we're asking government to make some policy changes, things like a water efficiency label on appliances to help customers understand uh, whether or not they're buying a leaky dishwasher or a wasteful uh, washing machine. All of that is part of how we will meet the challenge of climate change uh, over the coming decades. Mm. Uh, high financial penalties, you, you say, for leakages, but, but not for the bosses of the water companies. We're seeing eye-watering bonuses being handed out to, to, to them millions and millions of pounds. Do you really think they're worth it? Well, I think the water industry is investing over £10 billion every single year uh, in some of the largest infrastructure programmes in Europe. And I think it's millions more if it didn't give its bosses massive bonuses. Well, I, I think it's right that companies try and attract the best possible talent, are competing in a global market for, for some of these company leaders, in order to manage these massive infrastructure programmes. After all, it, it's actually quite important that we have really good company leaders, given the importance of the water sector for the environment and for customers' but, but, everyday lives. But are they lives. that good? If we, if we are seeing pipe bans, leakages, massive problems across the country. It, it doesn't strike most of us. If, if most of us were doing that as our jobs, it wouldn't be seen as being especially good or, or at the top of our field. If you, if you look at the data from the independent regulator off what, then you've seen massive improvements to um, uh, almost every possible outcome for customers, whether that's customer satisfaction, whether that's leaks, leaks as I mentioned, lowest ever on record, whether that's um, supply interruptions. You've seen enormous progress over recent decades, and, and that's what companies have been getting on and delivering. 
I mean, the, these are targets that are, you know, some, some would question whether they are targets that really are being met and whether re really customers themselves are really seeing a difference or feeling a difference. Uh, so all the data is there on, on the off -world website and, and people can go and have a look. Equally, I, I completely understand that if you're someone who's seeing maybe a leak spring up in the street, then of course I, I understand that that is going to be frustrating at a time when the water industry is asking everyone to do their bit as well. Uh, but I would say that we've made swift progress. We've got very aggressive targets every year uh, for the rest of this decade to continue bringing leakage down, building on that lowest ever uh, level of recorded leakage. Um, and on other customer outcomes as well, we, uh, we're determined to keep on making progress. Thames Water today handing out bottled water in the Stoke and Church area because they can't sort out the supply there. I mean, again, it, it just doesn't sound like companies that are being very well run. Uh, I'm not familiar with the, the specific example you, you cite. Uh, where it does uh, become necessary to hand out uh, bottled water in specific limited circumstances, then uh, actually we're well practised at making sure that customers uh, uh, are supported during those uh, difficult times. Now, fortunately, the UK is in, a, is in a much better position than some of Europe. I think we saw an earlier report where uh, some of our peers in, in other nations maybe uh, don't, don't enjoy some of that. But, but on every outcome that, uh, that the data is tracking, we're, we're showing good outcomes for customers and the environment. But the fact of the matter is you pay your water bill, you expect water to come out of your tap, and you've got companies that aren't managing to get water out of taps to people. You've got companies that are saying, please don't put water on your gardens. You've got companies that have got leaks. We, we saw this ludicrous leak in, in East London last week where there was four, four feet of water just earlier this week. Uh, and yet you seem to be saying that this is an industry which is just doing brilliantly. Everybody's ever so happy and, and, and the guys that are running it are worth these vast sums. So the, there are huge challenges, of course, and population growth, climate change, the need to further reduce abstraction to protect the environment. These are all challenges that, that we're having to respond to. Um, I think I would, I'd say that you know, leakage has come down by over a third since the 1990s, but there's clearly more to do, and, that, and that's something that, uh, that we're working really hard on. In fact, there are hundreds of people out, as we speak now, uh, finding and repairing leaks. We're using uh, more advanced techniques than ever before. We're using artificial intelligence, drones, satellites. We're using smart networks to try and track these things and, and stop leaks where they occur. Unfortunately, there will, be, uh, there will be occasional examples of leaks occurring. And in fact, when soil becomes hard and dry and is subject to very hot conditions, it does tend to crack and move and put additional pressure on uh, pipes. And you will sometimes see them springing up uh, for that reason, which is exactly why we have hundreds of people out right now uh, to make sure that we're on those as fast as we possibly can. OK, Stuart Colville, Director of Policy at Water UK, thank you very much for coming thank on you. today.